20 years ago. Wayne Biddlebaum lived in another town, in another state. He had another name. His real name was Adolph Myers. Adolph Myers was a school teacher in a small town out in Pennsylvania, and he was beloved by the boys and girls of the school. Adolph Myers was meant by nature to be a teacher of children. He was one of those rare, little understood men who rule by a power so gentle that it passes as lovable weakness. With the children of his school, you could find wing Adolf Myers walking late into the evenings or sitting out on the schoolhouse steps, just lost in a kind of, of dream. And here and there would go his hands, caressing a shoulder or <laughs> playing about with a tousled head. When he spoke, his voice was soft and musical. In a way, the voice and the hands, the caressing of a shoulder, the touching of a hair, were all part of this schoolmaster's effort to carry a dream into young minds. Under the touch of his hand, doubt, disbelief, went out of the children's minds, and they too began to dream. And then, the tragedy. A half-witted boy became enamored of this young teacher. He imagined many, many things, and he went forth to tell his dreams as fact. Through this Pennsylvania town went a shudder, dark, shadowy doubts that had been in people's minds about this Adolf Myers were now galvanized into belief, and the tragedy didn't linger. Boys were jerked up out of their beds at night and questioned, sure, he put his hands about me. Oh, he was always touching my hair. The next afternoon, the saloon keeper came out to the schoolhouse door. He called Adolf Myers into the schoolyard. And he began to beat him with his fists. <clears throat> I'll teach you to put your hands on my boy. When he grew tired of beating the master, he began kicking him about the schoolyard as the children watched. It was raining. A crowd had gathered. One of the men from town arrived with a rope. Adolph Myers would be chased from that Pennsylvania town in the night. The crowd chased after him, swearing and throwing rocks and sticks and great balls of mud at this figure that cried and ran faster and faster into the darkness. Twenty years now, Adolf Myers had lived in Winesburg, Ohio. He was 40, but he looked 65. The name of Biddlebaum, he found it on a box as he rushed through a freight house in an eastern Ohio town. So he took that name and the name of Wayne, well, that'd be given to him later. He had an old aunt who lived in Winesburg. She was a black-toothed old woman who raised chickens. And he lived with her until she died. And then he became a day worker out in the fields, going timidly about forever, just striving to conceal his hands. Though he didn't understand what had happened in that Pennsylvania town, he knew that his hands 
It must be the blame. And again and again, we heard the voices of those fathers saying, keep your hands off my child. I'll teach you to touch my boy. Heading back into his house, as the evening fell, Wing Biddlebaum cut slices of bread and spread honey upon them. And in the darkness, he could no longer see his hands, and at last they were quiet. Lighting a lantern, he washed up his few dishes and noticed a few stray breadcrumbs on his cleanly washed floor. So taking the lantern down to a low stool, he began picking up the crumbs, one by one. And in the darkness, this kneeling figure looked like a priest going through decade after decade of his rosary. <laughs> 